Hello, this is Sarah Soil the Plant, and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be doing a plant haul for you. The last time I did one of these was back in September, so it's been about four-ish months since the last time I did one of these, and I was gifted a few of these plants and some I bought, but I want to introduce you to all the plants that I have introduced to my home. Some of these plants have made little cameos in other videos, but I still want to introduce you formally. I don't really have any sort of order plans, so I'll just start with the one in front of me. This here is a small cutting from my parents' Christmas cactus. You can see that it's got nice blooms that have started in the wintertime. I got it with the bloom on and it's definitely underwatered. You can see it's wrinkling. I was doing a little bit of reading about this plant because I'd never had a Christmas cactus before. And it turns out that they do like a little more water than your average cactus. So clearly I am underwatering this poor thing. The soil that it's in is very, very airy, so I think I'm going to be repotting this either tonight or tomorrow before I do my full watering for all of my plants. Hopefully switching out the soil will make this thing a little bit happier, but my parents do have a very beautiful, large Christmas cactus, and theirs is very lovely and blooming right now, so I have some hope that I can make this thing survive, and if not, there's more cuttings where that came from. But I'm gonna try to keep this one alive and keep it happy, but this is a Christmas cactus. Staying on that same vein, I do have a lovely spider plant that is grown from one of the pups off of my parents' spider plants. I actually featured this plant in a common plants I would never buy video and the main reasons I didn't want to get one of these is because they reproduce like crazy and I'm sure I could find a cutting. Thank you mom and dad. But also I was afraid that the cats would go after the dangly bits so I have made sure to put this way way on top of a shelf. I hope that's enough light for it, but I want to keep it far, far away from the cats or give them any temptation to go after it. But those were the only two reasons that I didn't want one of these. I actually do think they're very cool and they're classic plants for a reason. They usually grow really well. They produce babies. They reproduce. They're pretty hardy for the most part. I do think they're a very cool plant to have. And one thing that I never really appreciated about this plant, because this is one of the few plants I could have named growing up before I was interested in houseplants, but one thing that I noticed about this that is like truly like really beautiful is the leaves are just actually kind of stunning. They have the white centers and then green on the outside. And it's a really cool like little stripe gradient it has going on. And it's honestly really, really pretty leaves. And each leaf is slightly different. Like this one has way more white on it. I guess it depends on the light you give it. But yes, definitely happy to have a piece of my parents' plant. Maybe it's just me, but whenever I get cuttings or pups from a plant from a friend or a family member, it always means a little bit more to me than like your standard plant that you could buy from a store. So I love that I have cuttings from that plant. So I love kind of bringing all of those in. Another plant that I made sure to take some cuttings from is this right here, which is actually a golden pothos. You'd be like, Sarah, how do you have a gigantic houseplant collection and not have a golden pothos? Well, if I'm being truly honest with myself, I've never been a huge fan of what the golden pothos looks like. I like it for the most part, but I think because I see it everywhere, it just doesn't bring as much of that like happiness that most plants do. Like I literally see them everywhere. If there's one or two plants in a Home Depot, there's gonna be a golden pothos there. But I did get these cuttings and I got them for a very particular reason. And that's because the variegation on it is a little less on the golden side and a little more white. Now I know that's a variation within golden pothos. It doesn't mean that this is like a special variety or anything like that but I do think that the colors on it are way more interesting to me and just a little more special, you know? It's a little more out there and I wanna encourage it, so I made sure to take plenty of cuttings and hopefully the new growth that comes in keeps that nice white, almost like light, light cream variegation color to it. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing if I can keep that white going. Otherwise, I'll just have a standard golden pothos, which is also fine. You know, it's cuttings, it's from a family member, so I'm interested to see if I can keep it going or not. Another plant you might have seen, it was featured in my last video, is my Hoya Curtsii. It is the cutest little dinky thing I've ever seen. And I've seen these in different shops over the years, but they were always in big pots, really expensive. And I found this one for the low price of $8 for this tiny little pot. And I thought it was just the cutest little thing and I couldn't pass it up. I decided to finally, you know, bite the bullet, 
and you know pay the big bucks for a big Hoya curtsy I like this and because of the way Hoya roots are I honestly don't know how long it's going to be in this pot for it could be years honestly it depends on when they transplanted this into the little pots I have a Hoya crimson queen in a tiny little pot it was like a little square pot not much bigger than this and it was in that pot for three years and I finally put it into a larger pot and it barely needed it it was like barely had any extra roots but the leaves and the vines on it are insane they're growing they're like over a foot long but the roots are just like itty bitty so i'm not sure how long this thing's going to be in this tiny little pot or if it's ever going to be upsized i might have to take cuttings and do it that way in order to fill this out a little bit because as cute as this is you know i would forget about this in a heartbeat so i would like this to be a much more substantial plant but it'll be fun kind of growing it from a small little plug type shape. Also the texture on these leaves is so cool and weird. It almost feels like this is a fake plant, like it's made out of plastic. It's super friggin' interesting. I definitely think this is a cool texture, cool plant, different odd leaf shape, that little teardrop almost shape. It's very cool. So we'll see how it goes and if I can, you know, keep this one as happy as I do with my other Hoyas. And just because this plant is in front of me, I'll go to this one next, but this is my newest addition. This was a Facebook find. Um, I was perusing on there doing something else and I saw this post pop up and so I decided to jump on it, but this right here is a little philodendron white princess. Not a white wizard, not a white knight, a white princess. And I'm still not 100% clear on the difference between a white princess and a white knight, except that these can throw a little bit of baby pink. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm probably way wrong. When I first saw this post and saw the cuttings of it, I thought for sure this was a white knight and when she listed as a white princess, I was like, well, let me look this up and see if these are different. They are actually different. This is definitely one of those plants that if you found a big full one or one in a decent like six inch pot, it would go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So we'll see what it turns into. It's probably going to be years before it's worth, you know, chopping up and selling or anything like that. But for now, I'm very happy to have it. I'll definitely show you some close ups because this one is very subtle and very, very cute. The woman I purchased this plant from, the reason she was chopping it up is because one of her plants did decide to start throwing pink and she chopped up a bunch of the plant and tried to encourage that pink growth. So there is a small, small possibility, at least in the genetics of this plant, that it could throw pink, but the odds of that happening are pretty low. And I bought it knowing that the likelihood of that is very low. But I have had a white knight on my wish list, like from the very first wish list. I think that was my number one for a long, long time. And I'd say white wizard, but like a white knight or pink white princess like this is, you know, in the same echelon. So I'm very excited to have it. It's doing okay. I need to, you know, make sure I stay on top of it. It is in my humidity cabinet to give it the best fighting chance possible, of course. This is definitely more of a risky buy. You know, anytime you buy cuttings, there's a ch likelihood that they could, you know, crash and burn, not do well. So this is a little bit more of a risky purchase, but I'm hoping, hoping it does okay. I'm hoping those philodendron, you know, genes kick in and everything just works out okay. The last plant on this list is basically a Hail Mary. This is my third, yes, third attempt at owning this plant. And I said to myself, if I buy this plant again, it is going to be the biggest one you've ever seen so that there's no way it can die on me. For those unaware, this is a Stromanthe Trio Star. I got this at one of the local shops around here that is pretty good on price. And I found it, it was huge. They seem to be in very, very good condition. And I managed to get an eight inch pot of this for $50. It's not the cheapest plant in the world by any stretch, but considering a, you know, four inch pot, six inch pot of this can go for 20, I feel like this is not a bad deal. This plant has been in strict quarantine from the rest of my plants, just in case it brought spider mites over. I have been doing a couple sprays here and there, but it seems to be through the worst part of it, but I'm still gonna keep it separate for another couple of weeks just to be sure. Because not only do I not want this to transfer spider mites to anything else, I do not want spider mites to travel to this. Just for nerve reasons, I'm pushing the spider plant away a little bit more. I know there's a difference, but just I'm watching you. I will say when I bought this at the garden center, it was 
beautiful. There was a handful of different varieties. I think I picked the best one, of course. The woman at the register who was checking me out as I was buying this plant was like, hey, just so you know, you know, make sure these dry out in between waterings. And you could have dropped a dumbbell on my head. I was like, really? You know, don't you have to like keep these on the moist side? And she said, not in the winter time. In the winter time, let them dry out in between waterings. They like it a lot better. And then in the summertime, you can water it as normal. So for those of you out there who don't frequently kill Stramanthi Trio stars, do you subscribe to that also where you let it dry out in the winter time, but water it more often in the summertime like you normally would with any of these Calathea adjacent plants? Let me know, cause that just blew my mind when she said that and I've been holding true to it. This very particular plant has been in my possession for a little over a month. So far, so good. So preparing for this video, I was actually looking at in the soil, you know, checking everything out, and there are quite a few new growth points coming in, which gives me some encouragement. It makes me think that I'm doing something right, which is always a good sign, right? New growth is always a sign of healthy plants. So I will say when I did buy this plant, I was a little wary, but all of the plants were like this where you have some leaves that don't have the quite solid purple back and some of them are a little, you know, scattered or whatever. And I have, you know, a handful like over here, I've got some, you know, pure whitish cream leaves, which is not ideal either, but some of the new growth is coming in and it has the solid back. So I think it's just a lighting issue that I can easily remedy hopefully. Let me know down below which one is your favorite or if you have any sort of care suggestions on any of the plants purchased. I'm definitely listening, especially for the ones that are struggling or the ones that I'm trying to like get up to speed. You know, the Christmas cactus, the Hoya curtsii, the philodendron white princess, or the stromanthi tree of star. Those especially, I will take any and all advice you're willing to give me. I want these plants to survive. I want them happy. So I will take any advice you're willing to give. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye!